So one of the ways that you can fish for crappie is with a bobber or a float, some people call it. Um, so we have a bobber rigged up here. Uh, we use slip bobbers, so it the line slips through the bobber. Um, the way we rig ours up is we use a bobber stop at the top. That's gonna stop the bobber at the depth that the fish are hanging. So with the live sonar, you can see how, how deep the fish are. Um, if they hang consistently at four foot or five foot, then you can move this stopper up to that depth. Um, then when the bobber slides through, it's gonna hang your bait at that depth for you, right above, right above your fish. Um, the other thing that we do is we put a little weight above the hook um, and that helps the line slide through the bobber. Um, and then we put it a little bit above the hook so that it gives the minnow some freedom to move around so that um, it looks really natural for the fish. You can actually reel up past the bobber stop and cast it out um, and you don't have to have a ton of line out like you used to with a clip-on bobber. When we use the Mega Live, it just makes it so much easier to set your depth. It, it applies to bobber fishing. People probably don't think so, but you can chuck your bobber out and see exactly where the minnow lands in the water column so you can present it right at the perfect depth for the fish. It really helps a lot. There's four of them there. One of them is going to eat. Okay, so... There's her bait coming down. There it is. Now she's going to use the bobber. Where do I need to be closer? To, yeah, closer to the boat. So bring it back. Okay, you're. There's Am so I many good? fish there okay. right now. I can't see okay. it. <clears throat> so I'm trying to find the. There it is. There it is. Okay. Good one. <laughs> Push it forward. All right, that's the depth. Here he comes. I'm watching the bobber, which is um, a good point because everybody gets caught up in watching their electronics, which is how everyone fishes these days. So then when you switch to fishing with the bobber, it's a habit to watch your electronics and you miss the bite. When you start fishing with the bobber, it's real important to look at the bobber to catch the bite when it happens. I think you taught him something. Eh, here he comes. Oh, you moved him about a foot. Yeah, I didn't feel him. He's still hanging and did you see that? Did you get that? Yeah, what happened? He knocked the minnow off her hook. He circled back around and ate the minnow as it was floating in the water column. So now he's just hanging out. You're feeding him. Yeah. <laughs> well, we want him to get bigger. <laughs> so the, the bite's been pretty finicky and they want the bait held super still. And they take a long time sometimes to look at the bait. And one of the advantages of fishing with a bobber or a float is that you can keep that bait in exactly the same spot for as long as they want to look at it and then bite it when they're ready. You want, you want to keep the bait above the fish. Fish generally feed up. When they're super aggressive, they will follow a bait down. But this time of year, the way they're acting, they want that bait sitting still. They want it above them. Yeah, yeah, coming up to about five. Drop it. Here he comes. Yep, go ahead. Better one. Mm -hmm. Good job. With the Mega Live, we figured out that the fish like the bait vertical. They, sometimes they don't like to chase it as it pendulums down. So when people are beginning, they have a hard time with a normal jig or a straight minnow to pitch it out and keep it vertical and stop it on the fish. So if you put a float on the line, you can pitch that bait past the fish. And when the line slides down through, 
it'll hold the bait vertical on the fish. You don't have to worry about stopping it so much because the float will keep it straight up above your target that you're aiming for. For beginners and keeping the bait in the right spot, a float works great. And a lot of people are fishing with really long rods to try and get the bait further away from uh, away from the boat. Um, by using a float, you can get the bait further away and not have to worry about pulling your rod you know, closer to you, further away to adjust where your bait is hanging. You can just toss your bobber out and it, it stays where you put it. When we're, we're fishing this technique, uh, the slip bobber, uh, we tend to use a little bait caster. Um, it's all stainless steel gears, it's all metal. Uh, it's got a level wind, so you don't have to worry about your line getting tangled up when you, you reel in. We use 15 uh, pound braid. It's suffix, it's got Gore-Tex in it, so it doesn't pick up water and carry it back to your reel. Um, as far as the bobber goes, I mean, you can use about any kind of slip bobber that you want. This is a thill bobber, uh, any of them will work. We use the just normal old rubber bobber stops that you can get anywhere. We have a tungsten weight on, you can use shot weight, you can use a lead weight, egg weight, it doesn't matter. Um, I think we have a, a quarter ounce on now. And then we use pretty heavy hooks. I think this is a number four eagle claw bait hook. You can get them anywhere. We use a heavy hook because we don't like them to bend. Uh, another thing we do different than people is we hook the minnow through the back because that way I can tell whether the minnow's on there before I pull it up. I can feel the weight of the minnow because he's sideways in the water. If you hook them through the lips, they trail straight up. You don't feel any resistance when you lift it up out of the water. Okay, so another tool that Hummingbird has is the Mega 360. So when I go to new water or new lake, or if I'm fishing submerged laydowns, if I'm looking for stuff, the, there's no better tool than the 360. Cause it, you can pick out, like right now we're scanning 80 foot. We're looking 39 foot in every direction around the boat. I'm keeping it focused pretty much in front of the boat because we're fishing into the wind to our direction. But we have a laydown cedar tree right next to us. You can see the shadows from the branches on the tree. You don't really see the cedar tree, but you can see the shadow of the branches and the base of the tree. If you notice the round shadows in the cedar tree, those are fish. Those are shadows from those fish in, the, in that tree. You can see them hanging. So I can take it, turn the 360 and the live on, and you can see the fish hanging in the tree. It helps you find what you're gonna fish. Was that all the way down? Yes. Okay. Sorry. You hit it. Good one? Yeah, Looks like a good it was one. tangled. There we go. He was tangled. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Mm. Heck yeah. <laughs> Just had to get it in front of it. Okay. So this is a little better fish. Yep. On a slip bobber. So obviously um, we the fish are really wanting it to sit still and the bigger fish are wanting to bite it. Um, when, it's, when it's sitting there for a while, they have time to take a look at it and this nice fish here decided it would eat it. She always catches the biggest fish. 